G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean. Uh, if you're new here and you're wondering what I talk about, I talk about tech, tutorials, gaming, videos, uh, streaming, unboxings, everything tech related really. Uh, but today we're going to be doing a tutorial that I've wanted to do for quite some time now as it's something that I've learned a lot over the last couple uh, years is how to set up your PC for streaming. So we're going to be doing a start to finish guide on setting up your PC for streaming, what kind of hardware you'll need, what software that I use, what settings I use and ultimately how you can configure those and tweak those for your own setup. Um, at home um, and also how to take your stream from something that looks quite basic to maybe that looks something a little, a little bit more professional with things like overlays as well. So there's a lot to go through. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them down below. If you found this video helpful, then give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a, give it a dislike and maybe tell me why. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. Um, you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram as well. Um, so I'm all over the place. You can hit me up wherever you like with your questions and I'll do my best to get back to you. So let's head into the computer room now and go through this start to finish guide on setting up your streaming for Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Thanks for watching. G'day guys, how's it going? So welcome back, we're in the studio. And like I said, I'm gonna be taking you through a start to finish guide on how to set up your PC for streaming. So this might be streaming to YouTube, streaming to Facebook, um, Twitch, or whatever platform is most popular for your genre, depending on if you're gaming, if you're just doing live chat, music, it all depends. But this is some steps that you can take in order to get yourself from not streaming to live streaming. And it only should take you roughly about maybe 15 to 30 minutes to get yourself set up and streaming. So there is a few things I'm going to go through. There is going to be quite a lot of information. I'm sure I'm probably going to miss out on something. And if I do miss out or if you have any questions, make sure you leave those comments uh, or questions in the comments or uh, comment section down below. Um, and let's begin. So first of all, um, I just wanted to go through my system. So key to having a good and solid streaming uh, setup is a capable computer. If you are doing it on, you know, your mum or dad's laptop or a work PC that's not really designed around gaming or high-end professional components, you might run into some issues. So I'll share with you the system that I'm using to give yourself a good idea of um, what's needed. So I'm using the Ryzen 5 2600 CPU, um, which is a 6-core 12-thread CPU. I've got it on 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 megahertz RAM. I've got a 480 gig SSD drive, um, a one terabyte drive for storing all of my footage, and then an RX 80, RX 580 eight gigabyte graphic card. Um, the case and everything else isn't really too important. Um, I'm using Windows 10, it does say home, but I'm actually using Windows 10 Pro, which you can actually see, um, where are we? Windows 10 Pro up in the corner here on this little window. And like I said, Ryzen 5 2600, I've got it overclocked slightly to 4 gigahertz, 16 gig of RAM, and it's a 64-bit operating system. Um, the monitor that I personally use to do everything is a 27-inch UD68 4K screen. I've got a Corsair K68 keyboard and mouse, but like I said, the peripherals, the monitor keyboard and mouse doesn't really matter too much because your audience isn't really going to be seeing that. Making sure that you've got a fast enough CPU, fast RAM, enough RAM, a fast storage device like an SSD, and Windows 10 Pro is, I think, the fundamentals, and obviously a good graphic card as well, depending if you're playing games or not. Um, now, once you've got your PC sorted and you think that my PC or your PC is okay and it's up to spec, um, the next thing you want to do is test your internet connection. There's no use having an awesome, fast, uh, capable computer if you've got a really poor, bad internet connection, because that's gonna mean that your streams uh, dropping in and out all the time and your audience isn't going to hang around because they're going to think there's some sort of issue. So the first thing you want to do is maybe load up something like speedtest.net and do a speed test. So if I do mine here, it'll take a few seconds, it will measure the ping and then the download and then the upload. The download speed isn't too important, it's more important on what your upload is because your upload is determining what quality you can upload your footage at and what your audience will be seeing, whether or not they'll want to see 720p resolution or 1080p resolution, 1440 or 4K. 
and also will matter if you want to do 30 frames or 60 frames per second. So you can see here that I've got a really fast internet connection where I live here in Sydney. I've got a ping of about 13 milliseconds and I've got a download of about 95. My upload is about 34, 33 depending on the time of day, but generally speaking it doesn't get less than about 30. So the next step, once you've got your speeds figured out and you know what internet connection uh, you've got and you think, yes, I've got a good internet connection, it's fast, I've got a good upload, um, you want to try and have an upload of around at least, I would say, 3 to 5 megabits per second um, for streaming comfortably. So the next thing is, I'll leave links to all this stuff by the way in the description, but you want to head to uh, a Google support document which was published by YouTube for YouTubers uh, publishing to this platform and it's a really good guide to give you an idea of what type of um, speed for your internet connection you will need in order to upload at different resolutions. So for me, I want to do 1080p, which is HD, at 60 frames per second. And so it's saying that the resolution needs to be set at 1920 by 1080 with a video bitrate range of 4500 to 9000 kbps. But if you just looked at the speed test we did, you can see that the speed test is only in Mbps. So you sort of need to do a bit of a conversion. Thankfully, Google allows you to convert that. So if I was to do 34.23, it equals 34,230 kilobits per second. Or if I was to measure and go, okay, 9,000 kbps, which is what I want to do the maximum setting for 1080p 60 frames. If I go 9,000, it'll tell me that I need a data transfer rate of 9 megabits per second. And if you look at the speed test, you can see I'm well over that. So I shouldn't have any issues at all streaming at 1080p uh, 60 frames per second. So now that you've got your PC sorted, you've got your internet connection speed sorted, you've got your encoder settings, you know, if you want to choose a lower um, frame rate, one that is quite popular is 720p at 60 frames, which means you can do between 2250 and 6000 kbps, uh, which I think most people should be able to stream at. Even if you wanted to do 30 frames, it goes down and quality obviously means less bandwidth. So if you wanted to do 4K, for example, you know, 20,000 to 51,000 Mbps, which is really quite intense and most computers would have a hard time doing that anyway. So the sweet spot I find is around 1080p or 720p. Now you've got your speed test, you've got your encoder settings. The next step is we need some software. You can just use the YouTube um, built-in settings within the YouTube browser or within your Chrome browser on the YouTube homepage. There is a little camera button. If we go up to the top, you can see there's an option to say go live, um, which will get you started. But if you want to do something a little bit more professional, like I said, this is a tutorial not to just get you started, but maybe to get you a little bit more uh, professional than some of the other streamers out there, then you'll need some software. Now, I've talked about this already in one of uh, my other videos, but a great piece of software is a software from a company called Streamlabs. Streamlabs in conjunction with OBS Studio. OBS is another free um, open source piece of software, have collaborated and it's a really great program for streamers and it doesn't cost a cent. So what you'll need to do though with Streamlabs is create an account and then log in. The reason for doing that is it will store all of your settings. So if your computer somehow crashes or you're always on different computers, different setups, it will take your settings with you. That's the other great thing about Streamlabs. And if you want to, you can actually have the option for uh, people to donate to you cash in your local currency. Um, if that's something that you want to set up, Streamlabs will help you do that as well. So it's a great piece of software. You don't have to do that. If you just want to stream, you can do that. If you want to just do very basic stuff, Streamlabs will do that as well. But there's a lot of other features um, that I won't go through in this video that you can take advantage of if you wish to. Once you've got your accounts and you've logged in, you want to go ahead and download the software. It's about 245 megabytes. It's for Windows 7 or later. So even if you're not on Windows 10, you can still use it. And once you've got it installed, you should see something like Streamlabs um, on your desktop. There will be a little icon probably down the bottom here on your desktop somewhere. Um, I've already logged in and obviously got mine configured, but in the Streamlabs OBS software, 
you should see a little cog setting up in sort of the top right hand corner of the software. And when you go into your settings, this will allow you to tweak everything for your streaming. Now the most important part is where it says stream, the second option down, which is talking about the server that you're going to be streaming to. So for YouTube, for example, um, I'll show you how I set up events and how I get a URL and also where the stream key comes from. So we'll just quickly jump out of Streamlabs for just a second and we'll go to YouTube. And I don't mind you guys seeing this. This is public information anyway. You can basically, on your YouTube account, if that's what you're doing, go into settings. So once you click on your little icon, click on settings. And then what you need to do, actually, sorry, I'm going to go back, click on your name and then go to my channel. Once you're at my channel, then you can go to create a studio. Once you've got create a studio open, takes a little while sometimes depending on your uh, internet connection. Also, I think it depends sometimes on what YouTube's up to. But on the left hand side, we'll have a section here that says live streaming. So we'll click on live streaming. And then what we'll do is we'll create an event. So where it's got here, events, we'll click on events. And this is if you want to create a stream event prior to the stream going live. So people can get a bit of warning before you're about to go live. So they can maybe put some time aside or put it in their calendar. You can go ahead and click on new live event up in the top right hand corner. Once you click on new live event, it will ask you to give it a title. So I'll call this one um, live stream 26 of the February 2018 and that's going to go live tonight at let's say 8 o'clock. Description, this is what um, audiences will be able to read about your stream before it goes live. So this is a live stream answering any tech questions you might have and then your tags might be something like this is what people can search that hopefully will direct them to your channel or your page or your stream so people answering tech questions live tech support live stream February 2019 Okay, so you can just play around with your tags. You can set this to public so it will show up on your page and then you can click create event. Once you've created your event, you'll need to click on the advanced settings. We'll go back to info and settings, sorry. And we'll go to advanced settings and we'll choose a category. Now the category is obviously choosing your demographic. Mine is science and technology, so I'll leave it there. Um, I want live chat to be turned on. I'm going to automatically start the event when you start sending data to YouTube. So that way the event starts when you click streaming or start streaming on OBS. So I'll tick that. Um, I want low latency. So that way my audience can sort of interact with me in real time. So that's quite important as well. We'll click save. Always click save after you've made any changes. And then what we'll do is we'll go to the ingestion settings. And this is where you'll get your URL and your stream key from. So this is really important that you keep this confidential. You can always get a new one, but the last thing you want is someone else taking over your stream because they've got your stream key. So keep that private and to yourself. Um, we're going to go ahead and do maybe a reusable stream key or a single use stream key. It's really up to you on how often you're going to be streaming. Um, but for this example, I'll do a single use stream key and we'll go and wait for it to load. And then it's going to give me this information here. It's going to give me a stream name. It's going to give me a primary server URL and a backup server URL. This is if one of the servers is offline or there's some maintenance or it has some issues. So with your stream name, we're going to copy that to our clipboard and we're going to paste it in on Streamlabs OBS stream settings where it says stream key. So I'll click show. You can see it's got 9G45 as the last four. And it's got the same thing here, 9G45. The URL, simply copy the URL in, paste that in, and press done. 
on the YouTube side, that's pretty much it. If you want to add a thumbnail, you can. If you want to add a second camera input, you can. If you're fancy like that, you could add a third or a fourth or whatever you want. But that's really the basics of getting your event created, getting your stream key for your encoder software. Um, so that way you can actually start streaming to YouTube. Then, if you want to, while you're streaming, you can go to something called the live control room. So once you start streaming with Streamlabs, for example, that information is going to be on YouTube for you to see and make sure there's no internet connection issues or anything else. Um, down the bottom as well, you'll also see an option here where people can chat with you and you can see those chats if you want to and you can reply if you so desire. So that's really all there is to know about the YouTube section. Um, if we get back out of this now and we go into OBS again, go back into those settings, we'll need to choose our output. So I've got mine set to quite simple. Um, the bitrate is 9000, software x264, bitrate for audio is 256. This is your audio quality, so the higher you go up, the better your audio quality will be. Everything that I do is in 256 and I find that's perfect. Um, and then we want to do video. So the video part will be depending on your monitor, but for me, my base canvas is 3840 by 2160 as I'm using a 4K monitor. And then the output scaled resolution is going to be 1920 by 1080. That's the resolution that I want my audience to see on YouTube. And I want it set to 60 frames per second. So that way if I'm playing games, which is what I do a lot of the time, um, it's going to be really fast and it's going to be hopefully quite engaging because of that reason. So that's why I choose 60 frames. You can choose 30. Um, 30 is, I guess, the standard for film and TV or 24 or 29. Um, whatever you like, if you want to change it to something different, you can. But personally, I want to do 60 frames a second. Once you've done that, you want to go ahead and press done. Now, once you've got your stream set up, all you need to do is press go live. If you want to start streaming, press OK. And everything that's going to be in Streamlabs in your um, themes are going to be going to YouTube. Now, before I do that, speaking of themes, that's one of the other great things about Streamlabs. If you want to go ahead and pick a theme for your stream, you can do that. It will do all the custom graphics for you and you can position it wherever you want. So if I was to go to mine, um, if we click on, I think it's editor, you can see I've got a stream theme called Geometric Madness. And it put all of this here for me. It did everything. All I had to do is essentially double click and change my name for different things. Um, obviously it's got generic information when you first put it there. And then you can go ahead and position your webcam in the center of the frame. Um, and you can you know, move things around wherever you want. You can add widgets so people can go ahead and donate to you or subscribe to you and you get actual notification in the stream of that happening, which is great for your audience to feel like they're connected and that they're interacting with you. I won't go too much into the themes part of it though because there is so much to go into. And if you do want to know more about themes, let me know and I can leave links to down that, uh, to that down below as well. Um, and maybe even do a video about it. So just let me know what you guys want to do. So. Just to recap, the first thing you want to do is get yourself a solid PC, a solid internet connection, pick what type of resolution and encoder settings you want to use, make sure that you actually do have that encoder setting, uh, sorry, make sure you are capable of sustaining that encoder setting, get yourself some streaming software like Streamlabs OBS, and then create your event within YouTube. Once you've done all of those things and you've got Streamlabs loaded, you can press go live, start streaming, and everything will go up to YouTube. So that's my start to finish guide. A lot of information to go through, I know. Hopefully it wasn't just a big blur for me speaking for about 25 minutes. Um, but like I said, if you have any questions at all, leave them down below, and I'll do my very best to get back to you. And you can always find me streaming on Monday nights and Thursday nights at 8 or 8.30 p.m. Um, AEDT. I always have events there so you can see when I'm going to be streaming and I'll always try and uh, answer any questions you guys have. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.